good morning students the next topic that we are going to see is about risk so what is risk risk involves exposure to a given danger or hazard okay risk means when you are exposed to danger that is called risk so if you are standing in the middle of the road when a lorry is coming that is risk if you are standing on the railway tracks when the gate is closed for the train to cross that is risk so when you expose yourself to a danger that is called risk so in health care also there are a lot of people who have risks it can be either because of their lifestyle a person who smokes or drinks is putting his body at risk for suffering from lung cancer and cardiac problems whereas other people they may not have lifestyle problem but because they were born with some genetic abnormality they will have risk so this is what risk is about in healthcare so epidemiologists are people who study the risk of people in public so they study the relative risk or the odds of a population developing a disease for example to make you understand easily if you walk in the middle of the road what is the chance of you having an accident some of you may say 100% but it is not true if you walk in the middle of the road the people who are driving on the road they may scold you but they will also try to avoid hitting you so there may be 10 people who do not have an accident at all even though they walk in the middle of the road okay so this is how the epidemiologists calculate risk in healthcare so even though you are exposed to risk sometimes you may not get disease for example you know hiv aids can also occur when you uh, shave with a blade which was already sh- uh, used for shaving a hiv patient so if you go to a barber who does not change the blade for every person then there is a risk of you suffering from aids but it is not 100% so what is the relative risk how do the experts calculate it so that is the relative risk that we will uh, see so the experts also warn the public about the risky behavior you know as a health professional as a medical sociologist you will be involved in talking about risky behavior to the public during your career so for example if you ta- counsel a cardiac patient heart attack patient then you will tell what is risky behavior if the patient is sedentary if the patient does not go for walks if the patient does not uh, take good care of his diet then the patient is undergoing risky behavior so if a person with lung cancer or other uh lung diseases if the person is smoking then you as a medical sociologist has to counsel the person not to smoke because smoking is risky behavior and it has lot of dangers okay so i hope you understand uh, what is risky behavior and how to reduce risky behavior in patients so same way in coronavirus pandemic also the risk is being measured so we see a lot of people on tv saying the number of people who are affected will increase by 10000 number of people who die will be 10000 or number of people who suffer will be 1 lakh or 2 lakhs or 10 lakhs so each person comes up with their own risk assessment okay so when a person who is having comorbidities like hypertension cardiac problem cancer so these people are higher risk of dying from coronavirus than younger people with no other health problems so this is what risk measurement is about in each disease here we have seen an example in coronavirus so when that applies to other, other diseases it is called risk assessment or risky behavior so I, we will see three examples the first one is the relationship between what lay people and experts think as risk for example a normal person will consider 
that he will not suffer from heart attack even if he smokes or drinks that is why we see a lot of people drinking and smoking because they feel that they will not have heart attack another example is people who drive on the road without helmet the government is telling everybody should wear helmet but lot of people do not wear helmet they have accidents and they die also why do they not wear helmet because they always think i will not have accident usually other because i am driving safely so same way people who drink and smoke they will feel i will not have heart attack it is only disease for other people when i get symptoms of heart attack or lung cancer i will stop that is what they think but the diseases the risk of diseases can be sudden so these people who have risky behavior have to change their lifestyle and who has to help them change their lifestyle the medical sociologist has to convince these people about the risk and they have to provide lifestyle or behavior changes so that they do not suffer from the disease example 2 we see how in hiv aids when it first came into the world people knew that it is caused because of having unprotected sex and that can lead to risk of hiv infection but even then lot of people who met so- sex workers did not use protection because they always thought that they are not at risk and only other people will get uh, hiv so finally these people also suffered from hiv and they died same way another example we see in this corona virus pandemic even though the government healthcare workers everybody tells the public to stay at home we see a lot of youngsters going on their bikes for jolly rides they are not going to buy medicines or essentials they are just going on their bike for a jolly ride that means they do not understand the risk of this virus so usually the mass media provides a major role in uh, public perception of risk so you know corona virus first affected people in china and that time itself there were lot of news reports uh, newspaper reports about the risk of people dying and suffering from this disease so the media or the press have a major role in providing perception of health risk so they cover lot of occupational issues road safety hiv these are the things that are covered by the press but most of the other diseases are not covered by the press for example heart attack lung cancer these are also called caused by risky behavior so this can be a good research topic for medical sociology students and others to see how risk and risky behavior affects people suffering from other diseases apart from occupational health road safety and hiv other than this we also see that social and economic process have created global nuclear chemical genetic and ecological hazards okay for example in visakhapatnam recently there was a gas leakage in one of the companies so we see that many people died so the role of a medical sociologist is to assess the risk through risk assessment procedure so what are the risks of a person in the surrounding area suffering from uh, such exposures so that these are some of the studies the research studies that you can do and uh, one term that you have to understand in the risk is governmentality okay here you have government and mentality so there are two words joined together governmentality so it is the focus on the ways in which disciplinary institution you know government is a disciplinary institution it provides social control so that means the public have to follow the instructions of the government so when the government tells the public to avoid risk then the public will be able to manage the risk so the government and the public together have to manage risk for example again we come to the helmet the government is telling public to wear helmets and they are the disciplinary organization and the people who ride the bikes they have to also cooperate with the government and then the risk of 
accidents and head injury will be reduced so then the risky behavior will be less one research topic that you can focus on is risky behavior by people during coronavirus pandemic the next topic that we study in this chapter is the sick role okay sick role i have already explained in another video for the third years so you can refer that also so the definition of sick role is it refers to the set of rights and obligations that surround illness and shape the behavior of patients and doctors so here there are two groups of people involved the patient and the doctor so the doctor has certain rights and obligations the patient has certain rights and obligations so what are the rights and obligations of the doctor when a patient comes to the doctor the doctor has to talk to the patient identify the symptoms diagnose the disease and treat the disease that is the role of the doctor what is the role of the patient the role of the patient is to ensure that he when he is sick he goes and sees the doctor he takes the treatment provided by the doctor then once he recovers he goes back to his normal job so that is the sick role and the rights and obligations by patients and doctors this was first defined by parsons who is a sociologist okay so whenever a person gets sick or ill it is a natural phenomena like just like the weather you do not decide when to get sick can any of you tell tomorrow i will have a heart attack tomorrow i am going to have cancer or day after tomorrow i will suffer from coronavirus or 3 days later i will suffer from typhoid no none of us can predict when we will suffer from diseases just like nature like the weather you do not know to whether tomorrow it will rain or tomorrow it will be hot so like that we do not know when we will get sick so though we do not know when we will become sick we should ensure that if we become sick we do certain things properly that is going to the doctor taking the proper treatment and trying to recover very quickly sometimes illness is also seen as a deviance for example people who smoke people who drink they are considered to be deviant people that means they are not having a healthy lifestyle so they can get cancer because they are not having healthy lifestyle they can get cardiac problem even though they know that smoking causes cancer they still smoke so in those people illness is considered as a deviance so those people are thought to cause sickness by themselves usually sickness is natural you do not know when you get sick but if you are a deviant person then you are thought to cause sickness for yourself so there are four aspects of a sick role which parsons uh, told first thing he told is you can interchange patients with cli- clients so clients are not responsible for their condition so if you become sick you are not responsible for your sickness the second thing is sickness or sick people can be excused from social roles and tasks so suppose a student gets sick then they can take leave they are excused from their social role suppose a, a doctor becomes sick he can take leave and stay at home he is excused from uh, working in the hospital so that is the second thing the third thing is the patients or clients are obliged to try to get well as quickly as possible so if you become sick you should ensure that you try your best to become well as early as possible for example if the doctor diagnoses you with the uh, with the disease like uh, for example if the doctor tells you have cold and you should avoid eating ice cream then you go to the house and eat two ice creams in the evening then that means you are not trying to get well but you are trying to get more sick so this is not the uh, sick role if you are sick then you should try to get well as early as possible then the next thing is when a person is sick the sick person or the family members of the sick person should take competent help that is they should go to the doctor and take treatment as early as possible 
So there are three criteria to see if a person is really ill. What are the three criteria? First thing is the presence of symptoms. So if there are some symptoms, then the person is considered to be sick. The second is how the person feels. So if the person is asked how you feel and he says I feel very feverish, I have cold, then that is a criteria to determine whether the person is ill. The third thing is the ability of the person to carry out daily activities. If you have a severe headache, you cannot go to work, you cannot do your normal travel, you cannot ride your bike. So if you are not able to do your daily activities, then it means that you are ill. So these three criteria you use to see if you are playing a sick role. Then there are rights and responsibilities of people who are sick. We already saw the rights and responsibilities of people who are sick uh, in the introduction and rights and responsibilities of the doctors. So here when you are sick, you are exempted from normal work in your house. So suppose your mother is sick, then as a family, you should ensure that she takes rest, she does not do the housework, she does not take care of you and instead you sh should take care of your mother. So that is the right and responsibility of a sick person to be able to avoid work, to take rest and others will take care of the sick person. But at the same time, every sick person has a responsibility. What is the responsibility? The person who is sick should want to recover and seek medical help and take the proper treatment and do their best to recover as early as possible. So you, the sick person has certain rights. What are the rights? You can avoid work. You can take rest. That is your right when you are sick. What is your responsibility when you are sick? You have to want to recover. You have to have a feeling that you should get well soon. Then you have to go to the doctor. You have to take treatment and you have to get well quickly. So these are the rights and responsibilities of people who are sick. This is according to Parsons' sick role. Okay, there are some shortcomings or criticisms of the sick role. So what is the shortcoming or criticism of the sick role? There are two ways in which this Parsons' sick role theory is criticized. The first thing is most of the sickness where the person wants to get well and can get well and go back to the normal roles and responsibilities is based on acute illness. Just now in the previous video we saw what is acute illness or a chronic illness. A chronic illness is one where you will never get back to normal lifestyle. You can never lead a normal life again. You will have some sort of problem even if not today some other day. So Parsons Sikrol theory is focused mainly on short term diseases or acute diseases like flu or food poisoning. It does not talk about chronic or long term diseases where the patient will suffer for a long time and cannot get well at all. So that is the first limitation of the Sikrol. The next problem about the Sikrol is it makes assumption that the relationship between doctor and patient. Here, the sick role theory tells the doctor has to diagnose the patient with the disease. The doctor has to treat the disease with the patient. So, here the emphasis of treatment, diagnosis, everything lies with the doctor. So, here the patient's right is reduced. So, that is the second criticism because more responsibility is given to the doctor than the patient. The third thing, sometimes in some diseases like lung cancer, obesity, the sick role theory by its deviance behavior theory, it tells that the patient is to be blamed for suffering from lifestyle diseases like cardiac problems due to drinking, lung cancer due to smoking and obesity. Okay, but actually the patients are not to be blamed because these are social issues and the patient may be addicted to it and that is a separate illness. It is not that the patient wants to drink, wants to smoke and wants to be obese. It is because the patient is already suffering from some other addiction problem or lifestyle problem that is leading to this behavior. So, uh, blaming the patient for such behavior is wrong. 
so that is the third shortcoming of the sick roll i hope you understood the sick roll theory it is very important because it not not only comes in your second year it is a very important question in your third year as well hope you understood this topic thank you